Hi and welcome. We are here at Groby TV Cinema in Kars near Düsseldorf in Germany. And I have a guest today. It's David from Trinov. Hi everyone. <laughs> and it's not only today. We've been here for three days now mm. almost. Just to specify what we are uh, really dealing with here. It's our Groby Cinema as we said. But what does it mean? It's a 9 by 6 by 280 room. We have a 7 point, well, 8 and four system here now and we have four 18 inch subwoofers sealed in the front and in the back so eight subwoofers 18 inch custom made and we're using a mac audio speaker system in the lower tier and in the upper tier so we have brick walls all mm -hmm. around but with plaster so some drywalling around we have a wood ceiling, not a concrete ceiling, as I mentioned. And I think that's not the ideal room. But as we have seen, yeah. it's a great room to use it, to show it and see what the system is capable of. Yeah, I think, you know, in, in any room, uh, solid walls are always an ad advantage. You know, we know that from, uh, from, from acoustics. So, you know, to say that you don't have this, you don't have that is not a negative. It's, a, it's actually a benefit in a way. You know, yeah. it, it allows the technology to work in its uh, in the way that it's intended. You know, part of the technology is base steering. So we're, we're steering a lot of the energy away from those side walls and ceiling anyway. So we're actually uh, trying to overcome some of those limitations, which I don't think is a bad thing at all. What have we been doing here the last three days? We wanted to take the opportunity to really experiment uh, with, the, with the waveforming technology. Um, when I say experiment, I mean that we wanted to try different layouts. So obviously the room here is fitted with a standard uh, DBA, so uh, four subs in the front and four subs in the back. Um, it is important to note uh, that this is not a requirement for, uh, for waveforming. You know, we can move away from these, these sort of symmetrical layouts. We, we could be three in the front, two in the back. It could be, that's not the point. But the point is that we wanted to uh, make a direct comparison between the uh, DBA and waveforming under the same conditions. Um, and it's really important, uh, you know, to do that for, for you guys, you know, because that's the bread and butter of your business. Um, you guys have been doing DBAs now for more years than I know which number to, to, to say. Um, and to bring waveforming forward as a, as a step forward in performance uh, for what you guys already do, I think was, uh, was a very important target for the last few days. Okay, so let's get into the details because yeah. you just mentioned some things and not yeah. everybody maybe knows what we're talking about. What is waveforming? What, what, what have we yeah. done here? What, what's the difference? What's new? Yeah, so waveforming is uh, Trinov's approach to active acoustics. Um, it's a very relevant uh, topic in the marketplace at the moment. Um, we've been working on this for over six years now. This is not a, a new uh, venture for us. It's taken a lot of uh, design and research uh, from, from our side. And we're now at the point where we're able to bring these into these, uh, these pilot installations. So in a nutshell, what is uh, waveforming doing? Uh, we're removing the modal uh, response of the room. Okay, so we're taking away uh, all the, the the peaks and the dips that you get in the in the frequency response that's one part and then the next part is controlling the decay so you have frequencies that hang around in the room for longer and shorter and we're basically trying to unify and uniform that decay time so all the frequencies play at the same level and they stay in the room uh, for the same amount of time and what does that really mean in terms of performance uh, it means you get a very smooth Base, base response in the frequency domain. Um, and it means that you get very, very good uh, seat to seat consistency and uh, precision as well. Okay, so what you're telling now, what you're explaining, if I wasn't that informed as I am now after the three days, <laughs> I would say, well, it sounds very similar to a well-known installation, especially here in Germany, the DBA. Yeah. But there are differences. Absolutely, yeah. And, you know, What's clear from our research is that the DBA is actually the perfect platform to begin with. 
Um, so it's the placement of the subs, like a DBA, we, exactly. we, we won't have a DBA in the end with yeah. waveforming, but we're using the same placement for the speakers, for e the subs. Exactly. Ultimately, you know, physics, di physics dictates, you know, this is not a magic algorithm that, uh, you know, you put it in, you measure and it, it makes everything correct. There is design and principles that we need to adhere to, uh, to get the best results. Um, but the benefit of waveforming is that we can deviate from those absolute um, design principles that uh, are apparent with the traditional DBA, um, giving a bit more flexibility to the end user. So that could be uh, the number of subwoofers. So it doesn't have to be symmetrical front and back. Um, it could be the placement. We could actually play with, uh, you know, if there's a door in the way, we could actually move uh, one of the woofers to, uh, you know, to a, diff a slightly different position. So it gives us a lot of flexibility and gives the user a lot of flexibility uh, away from those rigid uh, guidelines. And from my understanding, what I learned these days is also we take more the room with uh, all its flaws into consideration, like we have seating. Yes. We are not in an empty room <laughs> and seating does something with the base. Or at, in our case, we don't have a concrete ceiling that's not ideal for a DBA. Yeah. It always worked, but you can correct that some kind of way. Yeah, and you know the the the, the DBA when it was conceived was conceived in a in a in a symmetrical uh, sized room, so the, the the wall distances were all the same. That was the concept. The positioning was very rigid on the on the quarter points for the for the four by four, um, and that's not reality for home theater. So, yeah. you know, as soon as you add things like seats, things like people. Um, you know, uh, obviously have differences in terms of, uh, you know, uh, wall lengths and ceiling heights, then you're naturally moving away from the original intent of that, uh, of that engineering. And this is what waveforming allows us to do, is to basically uh, regain a lot of those non-linearities and get you back towards uh, what was the original intent and performance level that was intended. True. Because... <laughs> Now, just speak from the top of my head. Um, I know the cinema really, really well. I measured it, I don't know, hundreds of times in different configurations, setups, uh, speakers, subwoofer placement, single sub, DBA, small, big, everything. Yeah. And after hearing waveforming, I can say there is still something left in the room with the DBA. You just you, you see it kind of, but you cannot reach it. It's, it. it's out of your reach because physics demand that you cannot reach it. Mm -hmm. And with waveforming, it got way more precise. It opened up other frequency ranges Be because we are not only talking deep, deep bass. Yeah. We're talking mid bass and everything. It got punchy. And the funny thing is, you can configure it, It's right? It's, it's not set as a DBA. You can say, well, I want it like this, I want it like this, even on per preset base? Yeah, so we can, um, we have a number of parameters and without getting into the, 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 the stupidly technical, we can basically, um, we can bring back in more of the, more of the room to the, to the sound. So we, we basically take it from a very dry base where there is very little decay um, and it can sound very clinical uh, in mm -hmm. a good way, but, but very clinical. And then we can bring back some of that decay that, that users are mainly used to, uh, which provides that perception of bigger bass, bigger energy, a bit more full sounding. And th this is possible yeah. after the measuring. I Absolutely. don't have to re-measure every different configuration. No. It's just when you have the measurement done and you do not change anything in the room, then you can decide what kind of bass you want. Yeah, and, Maybe and different bass for music, different bass for cinema. Yeah, 100%. And, and that's always actually been uh, a feature of, of Trinov. You know, we, if you've got the measurement data in there in the first place, you can t change your time alignment position, yes. you can change all your EQ settings, target curves, uh, tune it to how you wish with those different presets. And the same is, goes for waveforming. Well, that sounds awesome. And mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you, it really sounds awesome. Um, I never have heard the room with so much power but that all that power was under control and um, you know what I'm talking about yeah. what movies we heard yeah, and yeah, yeah. it was really um, impressive and sometimes even frightening what the cinema is capable of um, <laughs> so that was a really great experience but 
if I want to do that, so what do I need? Yes, I need a trin off, but sure. what else? What are the sum of the minimum requirements? And these are not final for every room, but yeah. there are some minimum specs you have to meet. It wouldn't work with just one subwoofer. Absolutely, yeah. And, and we, we want to try and, um, <clears throat> with it being a, with it being a design-led uh, engineering-based specification, we want to try and understand the performance objectives. You know, how many seats do we have? How many rows do we have? How, how big is the room in terms of its dimensions? And then we can say, well, we would advise to get the best performance. This is how many subs we, we believe you can use. Then it can be stripped back. But ultimately, what do you actually need? You need uh, each channel for the subs individually uh, assignable because we measure every single sub. And as you guys well know from the measurement, we took quite a number of measurements. <laughs> uh, we really need to understand uh, the, the, I guess, the movement of the, uh, of the sound through the room. That's what we really need to understand. So we can, re we can reconstruct uh, that with, with the waveforming algorithm. So we do a lot of spatial sampling. Um, I mean, something like in this room, I think we were 19 measurements. So yeah. it's not crazy, you know, but uh, each sub gets measured individually and that's that's a must um which is something that's obviously very different from what you guys previously do so you were kind enough to uh bring in some more amplifiers and uh wire up the the subs individually for us so we could uh, we could do the testing this week yeah so in my words you can use your existing si uh, existing system if you have a dba installed or something mm -hmm. like that but you have to rewire it because you cannot use the whole wave front or sub array and the whole back array you have to ally or use a cable for every sub yeah. you need an amp for every sub so it's possible it's some work i'd say it's totally worth it so uh, that's uh, something <laughs> and as you said there are ideals and you can deviate from them because as we talked beforehand uh, before we met here you said well ideally we'd have six woofers in the front mm -hmm. we do not have six woofers. we have four yep. and it was still great so Absolutely. there's always some idea for some reference cinema room for a mixing studio but that doesn't mean if you do not meet the ideal you're unhappy with Absolutely. the result and, so. and you know again this this is where it comes back to the design in the first yeah. place you know the reason why i said we would potentially like more woofers is because when you have more woofers and they're, they're then closer together you get higher frequency mm -hmm. correction so maybe instead of it, it, it just picking numbers instead of it being 80 hertz, maybe it's up to 100 hertz, 110, 120 or higher. Yeah. Also, when you add more woofers, you gain more control. So you get better seat to seat consistency. Yeah. Um, in our tests that we've done at uh, ISE shows and other things that some of you might have seen, we've used a very large number of woofers and it's meant that we had very, very little deviation between each seat. I think it's fair to say in this room, we get a larger deviation, but we get less deviation yeah. than the traditional DBA, yeah. which is really nice. Larger than your um, show installation, yeah. but not a large deviation. Exactly, it, yeah. and we're, just, talk, we're talking yeah. the difference between plus minus 2 dB yeah. and plus minus 3 dB. That's and, what we're talking the difference, really. And we even stripped it down in the last configuration yeah. to a 4x2. Yep. And it still worked. Absolutely. Not as good as a 4x4, but it was still uh, great to see that it's working with a 4x2. So you can strip it down to six channels, which would be interesting for all altitude 16 users. Particularly, yeah. yeah. Um, because we have a channel count and we are known for 3D sounds. So sure. we need some channels for other things. Yeah. But with the great capability of extending the 16 to the 20 channel, mm -hmm. that really helps. Yep. And I'm really looking forward to see it more and more out there yeah and we are as well you know we're we're gaining more and more data all of the time so while uh the research um you know is 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 very very mature now um what we're learning about is now the practical side of installation which is what you guys as, yeah. as uh in installation engineers need to know about you need to know how to specify it you need to know how to measure it. You need to know, you know, what parameters you have to play with to tune the system like you've been used to. Um, and that's all that's that's coming up in the next uh, coming months. You know, we've we've started with our uh, specification guide for placement that was released just uh, last week. 
and we'll move forward with an implementation guide and then eventually we'll get to the uh, release of the software. Awesome. Thank you for your time for the three days. Yeah. Uh, you're not alone. Thank you in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and this should be it. And we'll talk more about it, but that's uh, the later point. So thank you very much. Thank you.